starting an engine that has been sitting there for 10 years is not a good idea without doing some checks. First of all, I'm going to drain the oil because that oil is spoiled over all these years. I'm going to change the oil filter. We put some fresh oil up. Then I'm going to check the cylinders, if they are still intact. And we look inside the cylinder, how good they are by removing the spark plugs and then putting a little um, camera inside and then we can see how good they are. I'll also be checking the camshaft. I will remove the valve cover to do that because I don't even know if the timing is still right on this car. So these are things I really want to do. I also will check the water, the cooling system. I'm going to check the water pump if the water pump is running free because that has to be. It may be seized. Hopefully the thermostat is not seized uh, because all these things can. It all depends a bit what kind of cooling liquid this car had inside. And then of course we still have the fuel. The fuel is another issue. Fuel will be spoiled over all these years. I'm not even going to try to run it on the fuel that's still in there. So I need to drain the fuel. And then I'm going to flush the hoses by providing some fresh fuel through the fuel pump. I may have to change the fuel filter. And then maybe I might have to open up the carburetors to see what's going on. And then I'm going to do a little compression test. See if I still have all the compression of all the cylinders. We do, we do a ignition test. And then we might just try to crank it over after we place the battery. I know a lot of talk, but that's what it is. So first of all, I'm going to start to drain the oil and remove the oil filter. Here we got the carter and the oil draining plug. It looks like they modified the carter a bit in the past. And then here is the clutch cable, which is really, <laughs> really in the way. This is going to catch something when you, while you're driving it. So, and it's held together with some twisted wires. Wow, amazing. I mean, I don't know why people do things like this. I mean, this is really messy. Well, the oil is going out. Let's check here. Typically that's magnetic and you should see some metal parts on it if there is a lot of wear and tear on the car, but this looks quite all right. And when the oil is still dripping, we're going to remove the oil filter right here. I already unscrewed it a bit, so now we can take that off a bit easier. So be careful that you don't get a shower with oil. And now it's time for the new one. And it's going to go in there, but I'm going to take a little bit of oil and oil the ring. Now, I normally only tighten the oil filter hand tight. There we go. I don't know how much oil it's going to take, but um, we'll see it on the dipstick. I guess it'll start with about three liters. That should be about the quantity that these uh, older engines would take. So let's see how much oil is in it now. And wipe it. I'm going to stick it down one more time. It looks like it's filled up all the way to the top. The next thing we're going to do is to remove the spark plugs and then look inside each cylinder with a little camera to see what the state of the cylinder is inside. If it's badly corroded, then it's not worthwhile actually to continue and to even to start to crank up the engine. If it's not, then we can continue. All right, so that went easy. Looks a bit black, so it's running a bit rich. And now we'll do the next ones. And we just go along until we got them all removed. Check. And to check the state of the cylinders, I'm going to use something what they call an endoscope or this is just a little camera actually with some LED lights on it and I can slide it in the hole of the cylinder and then I can see how the cylinder looks inside. And of course you will need to have the cylinder all the way at its bottom position. And hopefully you can see this, I'm going to try to hold it, but that's what you see right now is the piston touching the cylinder side. It's a little bit corroded, I would say, but not a lot. Uh, I see some white spots on it. There's some grooves on it. Okay, good. And now we'll do this for every cylinder. And all four cylinders look a bit the same, so they are quite all right. But I will inject some DW40 into them. 
And then I'm going to rotate the engine a couple of times. I'm going to rotate the motor on the crankshaft pulley and I'm going to do it clockwise. And this feels quite good actually. I don't see anything wrong with it. Don't hear no funny sounds. And the next thing we're going to do is to remove the valve cover. I already removed all the screws. Now with a little bit of jiggle, that should come off. Here we go. And let's see how that looks like. It's still pretty much oiled. The cam doesn't have a lot of wear of tear. I, 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 I don't really feel it. Mm, not really. So that's all right. And that's about it. So this is a single overhead uh, camshaft. Uh, it's one of the early designs of these uh, Pinto motors, by the way. Um, meanwhile, I did identify the motor. Um, this motor uh, is designed from 1970, and it was actually built in 87, and it's a two liter single overhead camshaft motor, uh, fitted in Cortinas and Ford Capris and many other vehicles. Uh, great engine to uh, do performance on. And I was just wondering if the camshaft wasn't changed on this one. Uh, if it was not a, you know, a, a racing camshaft, but it doesn't look like it at a first glance because it has all the original numbers on it. And the reason that I took off the valve cover is so that way I can verify the timing moment more correctly because I'm not sure if the top dead center markings on the pulleys are correct because you never know what people do. But by just watching the first cylinder, the, both the exhaust and the intake valve, if they are both closed, so in other words, first you will see the intake valve going down means the piston is descending, and then the piston comes back up, inlet valve will start to close, and at one moment in time, both will be closed, and I can then look on the cylinder, number one, inside the hole, because I have the spark plug removed, if it's a dot set cent that center, and I can even sense it with a screwdriver or a piece of plastic, if that is really the case. And that way I will be able to determine the correct top that center of this engine. But that's not for now. Now I would like to do a compression test on each of those uh, cylinders. Um, but for that, I have to crank up the motor. Now, I do not want to uh, get all the old uh, fuel into the carburetors. So I'm, first of all, I'm going to drain the fuel. Double. And then we check the distribution belt, because if this belt is going to snap, then we really have a problem. And I don't know what state it is in, so I don't even know when it was replaced. But if it's been sitting there for 10 years, and this is kind of a rubbery thing, you may have cracks in it, and the belt might actually be bad. So draining the fuel tank is a bit more difficult. So I don't even know how much fuel there is in there, but for sure that is old fuel, it has to go. So I have to take the wheel off because the fuel pump, it's an electrical fuel pump, is right here in the back. And all the way in the back, we have the electrical fuel pump with one hose coming from the fuel tank and the other one going to the engine. So what I'm going to do now is um, actually disconnect the fuel hose at the front of the motor and then I'm going to apply a 12 volts power supply to this fuel pump and I'm going to let it pump the tank empty. So I'm going to undo this hose here and then I should be able to drain the fuel. All right. Let's put it in and then see. So here's the power cable coming from the fuel pump. Just disconnect that and I will apply 12 volts to this pin. And we'll connect the 12 volts to the power lead. Of course, I gotta watch, make sure that I make no shorts. Huh? Looks like this pump is having a bit of a problem. Well, in that case, we'll have to take the fuel pump out. It looks like she isn't running anymore. 
So we tried to run the fuel pump, but it doesn't run anymore. I think even the fuel pump is clogged up with uh, rust and debris. So I had to cut the hose on one side because I even have to replace those. And now I'm going to take it out and let it drip out through the fuel pump, if that is doable. And I think that will be, will, will be the case. Here we go. I don't know how much fuel is left in it, uh, but it really smells bad. So let's have a look inside. I already disconnected it and you can already see the garbage. This is a little magnet that picks up metal pieces and there's quite some on that. And then you can see here debris and this is the filter. There we go. So I see the filter is having already a lot of debris and even inside there's quite some debris inside uh, here, for instance, I don't know if you can see it. So, uh, in other words, I really need to clean up this pump and see if I can get it fixed, and else I will have to buy a new one. The fuel lines are now disconnected and the fuel is drained, so now I'm going to do a compression test for each one of the cylinders. And for that, I'm using an ordinary compression meter, and here that is, and if you're a little bit lucky, you will see how much compression we have. I'm going to do it cylinder by cylinder, and then we'll see. This is without throttle. This so that's about six bar. And now let's do the next cylinder. Cylinder number two is equally six bar. Now we're testing cylinder number three. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit less. That's around five and a half to six. Cylinder four. And that's about five as well. So I've got two cylinders that are a bit higher than the last two. Meanwhile, I ordered up some goodies from Burton's in the UK. I've got a new fuel pump. And this is the Gold Flow fuel pump. It delivers around six to seven PSI and a high volume, exactly what I need for the carburetors. So I will be mounting this fuel pump first of all. It comes with a few of auxiliaries. Um, the filter that goes inside, the mounting rubbers, a cable, a grounding cable, and of course the connections for the pump itself. I've got some spare fuel hoses because I may have to replace some hoses and some clamps. I've got additional filters. I've got, of course, the distribution belt, which we will install, a brand new one, together with a new roller and a specific special bolt for that. And of course, new spark plugs. And that should be it for now to get this car started. So first of all, I'm gonna mount the fuel pump. So the fuel pump has an out and an input. So before I can hook up the fuel hoses, I will need to uh, install these connection points. Uh, so just remove the rubbers and then we'll turn those uh, connection points in there, but we have to seal off the thread. And to create that seal, I'm going to use some Teflon. All right. Because you don't want the pump to suck any air at the intake, and you certainly don't want the pump to push out any fuel on the output. So. That should be sufficient. And make sure that you don't uh, overlap the hole here with the Teflon. Here we go. I might be able to turn it one more for turn so it's really fitting properly. And I'm gonna move it like this. Uh, because I know the fuel hose is coming in from this direction. <clears throat> and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. That should be good enough. Next, we're going to install the fuel filter. And maybe there's already one inside, I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. There we go. I already opened it up a bit, guys. So I can see fluid coming out. So they have tested it. Yep, and there's a filter in already. You can see it sitting right there. But I'm gonna let all the fluid out of it because I don't know what it is. I have installed the fuel pump and at the same time I put new fuel into the gas tank. So now we're going to flush uh, the fuel hoses. 
I have disconnected the hose from the carburetor. Uh, this is the hose coming from the pressure regulator. And I'm gonna let it run for a while and I'm gonna catch all the fuel from the gas tank into this little container here. So hopefully that's gonna work. So let's give that a try and then we'll see. Whoops, looks like the blinkers are having a little bit of an issue. All right. So let's see if the pump is pumping. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, and fuel is coming out. As you can see, there is the fuel. I'm gonna let it run a little bit, not too long. So everything is flushed through. I hooked up a pressure meter to the fuel pump. So let's see what we got. So this is 0 0.25 bar. So what I saw was a 0 0.25 bar, which equates to about 3.4 PSI. Uh, so um, I think fuel pressure is good for the carburetor. Maybe a little bit on the high side, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I removed the timing belt cover uh, to have a good look on this belt and I don't see any cracks or severe damage on it. So I'm going to leave it on for now and I will replace it once the engine is out of the car because that will be easier. If the belt would have been with little cracks here and there then I probably would have replaced it right away and I wouldn't start the car. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So. I'm going to start the car or try to start it and see what it does, but I'm not really going to rev it up high and then I will shut it down. So at least I know the engine is working. I already installed three spark plugs, so now I'm going to install the last one. And those are brand new spark plugs, so that should help. Here we go. So let's hook up the spark plugs in the right order, because otherwise it's not gonna start. All right, so I guess this must be coming from there somewhere. But that's good enough for now, and let's see what this engine will do. So I checked the distributor, and inside that there were no cracks, and that was good. And then I also checked the braking points, uh, and here are the points. This is still mechanical stuff, see? So I actually cleaned those up with a little bit of uh, abrasive paper, and here that is, and you just put it in between the points and then you slide back and forth. And that's what I've done. And this is a 1500 grit. And then I cleaned it with some acetone. Um, I didn't check the gap. I didn't check the pre-advance because I assume that all this is still going to be all right. But I did check if it sparks and it actually does spark. So that's the good thing. Um, we'll do the final adjustment and all that later um, once we're go going to tune the engine. But right now, we just want to make sure and see if we can get it started. There we go. So, I think everything is about all right and it's about time to give it a try. I also installed a new battery uh, and corrected the connections, as you can see, uh, because I was a bit clumsy with this aluminum thingy that they had on there. That was pretty weird. And I will help the battery a bit because I might have to start a couple of times with my charger. Uh, so let's see. Oops. We are near to the moment of truth. Uh, we've changed the fuel pump. We have changed all the fuel. We rinsed the fuel hoses. We cleaned out the uh, pressure regulator. I haven't done anything on the carburetors. I left that alone. Uh, hopefully that will work. I double checked on the ignition. We cleaned the, con the breaker points. Uh, I checked that I had a spark on the ignition coil. That looked good. We put new spark plugs in. We have put a fresh oil filter in. We poured new oil in and I double checked if the camshaft was being oiled by the tube on the top. And I verified that the timing belt uh, was still intact, but of course that I will replace. Now I have fuel, I have ignition, and I have some compression. So I would expect this engine to start somehow. But let's see, let's give it a try. It seems like it's trying. So I will squirt in some fuel. All right. Um. Here 
it wants to. Let me just check. It smells a bit like fuel, but I did a few squirts already on the carburetor, so maybe I have the spark plugs backwards. Let's try. I might have had these backwards. There we go. Wow. It doesn't run very smooth yet. But it runs. I think I can take this off now. Oops. Oh, it looks like it needs this extra bit of power. The alternator may not be working. I don't feel no heat yet in the radiator. Um, coolant is still in here, so that's good. Let me double check. If that is the case. Ah, this is hard to get off. Yep. I wonder what the gauges are doing inside. So let's have a look on the oil pressure. The oil pressure looks all right. But I have no reading yet on my engine oil temperature and the temperature. And I think the alternator is not working. So the engine runs fairly smooth. The radiator uh, is getting warm. The hoses are getting warm. So that means that the thermostat is open. Um, and I read a temperature of about 55 degrees centigrade. I don't know if you can see it, guys, but uh, on the engine itself, it's around 70. So not, it doesn't run hot. I don't see any hot spots. So that is a good sign. So I'm going to measure the temperature once here. And as you can see now, it's around 61 degrees centigrade. All right. So folks, we are at the end of this video. Oh, we know the engine is running. It's running a bit rough, but it runs. The valves are making a little bit of noise, but it starts pretty well. I'm really surprised. So now one of the next things we're going to do is uh, in the next video is going to fix the brakes and then fix the clutch. And while the engine is out of the car, while I'm fixing the clutch, I will then further clean it up and then change the timing belt and do some other changes on the motor, uh, get the carburetors all cleaned out and all this. And then we'll put the engine back and then we'll tune it. And hopefully it will run a bit smoother. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And by the way, I had a good comment from one of the viewers. He said like, Steve, you need a name for this car? So this car is going to call it Old Sporty. <laughs>